to the late great Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. And I tell the story, I was very lucky to uh, know Jimi a little bit back in the 60s. And uh, we had released Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band on the And uh, he learned it and he played it on the Sunday night where I went to see him. He opened with it. Uh, and it was fantastic, he did a fantastic version. Only trouble was, he's using his uh, vibrator arm, this, this thing. And in those days, that would make the guitar go like really out of tune. So he's standing there and it's, it's hopeless, you know, it's all gone. There's no way back. He looks at the audience, he says, Is Eric out there, man? He's looking for Eric Clapton, you know. And Eric is out there, but he's cringing, isn't he? <laughs> Say, will you tune this for me, man? No. <laughs> anyway. So if you wonder why I've changed to this guitar, or we're changing all our guitars all evening, it's just we've got them and we're going to show them off. <laughs> Actually, this is the one I used on the original record in the 60s, so this is... Thank you! Yeah! Okay. Alright. I mean, great thing about coming back to Britain is, uh, places like this, I get a lot of my family in here. So, uh, got a bunch of them in tonight. Including my grandkids. Oh yeah. Give it up. Yes, it was 50 years since yesterday. Oh. Anyway, but imagine that, you know, your granddad is just an ordinary guy, you know, then you come to a show like this. He's rocking, man! <laughs> rocking granddad! Okay, kids, this is what I've been telling you about. We do this. <laughs> Oh, hang on, yeah. This next song is a song I wrote for my wife, Nancy. And she's here tonight. So this is for you, Nancy. Woo! Thank you. Oh, All right. Okay, so I wrote this next song for Linda. shows here and uh, I mean it's great that they bring all signs we love them but the trouble is you're trying to remember your chords and your words and everything and holding up these lovely signs and your mind says don't read the signs don't do it and the other bit of your mind says come on read them it's okay just read them so you do the palm from Mecca. Mm. Right. Oh, I came from Brazil to see you. Please sign my arm too. I want a tattoo. <laughs> Pittsburgh to US, UK. Please sign me. No <laughs> signing going on. <laughs> Can I please have the shirt off your back? That's cheeky, that one. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, the thing is, like, you know, it's lovely with these signs, but if I get one of the songs wrong, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> it's the signs. Yeah. Okay, this next song is a song I wrote for a video game called Destiny. And, uh, it's the first time we've ever played this one in the UK. Next 
next song is from back in the 60s. There's a lot of troubles over civil rights in America, particularly. And uh, we would hear the news back here. And uh, I wanted to try and write a song that if the people back in Little Rock, Arkansas, and all the places where it's going on, if any of those people heard the song, it might give them just a little bit of hope. There you go. This is Alright, uh, this next song is a song that I wrote uh, about John. Let's hear it for John! And uh, yeah, this is a song I, I wrote after he uh, passed away. And it's one of those songs, you know, you mean to say things to people, but sometimes it's just too late. So I wrote that, those feelings into this song. It's a kind of a form of a conversation that we never got to have. Okay, thanks. All right, well, we'd like to do another song, which was, uh, this one kind of almost wrote itself. I was around at John's house one afternoon and we were thinking about writing the song. And he had a poster on his wall, like an old circus poster. And pretty much all the words of the song were on that poster. We just kind of copied it down and made a song out of it. Hey, you are. Yeah. Oh, this is. Oh. Okay, so here it is. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So another story I tell, I'll tell it again, is that I was running the George's house. Let's hear it for George. Particularly the Beatles song, well, actually, Beatles, Wings. Uh, so many memories come back, you know, because it is suddenly it's like 50 years after everything. But uh, so, yeah, it's a lot of great memories come into my head, so I'm doing it. I'm surprised I don't faint. <laughs> anyway, this one, the memory on this one was I was around at George's house and we were playing ukuleles together, just jamming around. And I said, I've learned one of your songs on ukulele. So we played it together then, I'd like to play it for you now. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, George, for writing that beautiful song. Frank Sinatra was once asked what was his favourite Lena McCartney song, and he said something. <laughs> it's, we didn't write it, Frank. <laughs> I love you, Frank. But George wrote that one. <laughs> okay, here's a song that we'd like you to join in with. Okay? It's a bit in the middle, so I'll go, okay, now you, and you're on your own. But you will sing most gloriously. Yes, you are. Here we Uh, when we 
We did go and play a gig a few years ago now in Red Square. We were invited. And uh, we're the first rock and roll group to play in Red Square. Oh, yeah, give it up. Come on. And anyway, I mean, the amazing thing, I think, besides, it, we had a great gig and the Ruskies were a great, great audience. Um, and that song went down pretty well. But the um, amazing thing, I think, was getting to meet members of the Russian government, uh, Putin and his, all, all his ministers. They came backstage, you know. And uh, one of the guys came up to me and said, um, Hello, Paul. I am Defense Minister. Defense Minister of Russia? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, he says, First record I ever bought was Love Me Do. <laughs> And this other guy comes up, a taller guy, and he was in the government too. He said, um, we learned to speak English from Beatles records. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So here you go. Exclusive for you tonight. Here at the O2. In London. 